AI is not a conversation for what is to come. AI is there in the room with us right now and it's going to is disrupting every single sector. To my amazing panelists, thank you so much for being here. Big shout out to Just Ivy. Tell us how AI is disrupting your particular industry. When we think about AI in the education sector and particularly in the tech education sector, there's a couple of things that we think about. One is how is it impacting the way that we teach? So how do we actually use AI to be more effective in a classroom environment? And because one of the things that Marenga really values is the, um, the support that we provide to our students through that program, because it's fairly intense, uh, you know, learning how to code. And so what we've focused on for that is on the back end. So we have AI helping grade um, so that our technical mentors who work with our students don't need to do things with grading and AI to help manage this, the more basic questions that students have so that our technical mentors can focus on the more complex issues. But a bigger thing that we look at is what are the skills that are needed in the workforce in the future and how is the future of work changing so that we know what we need to be teaching to make sure that um, our students have the skills that are needed for the future. I recently had a conversation with somebody who works at Meta and he said AI is not going to take your job. Somebody who uses AI is, go is going to take your job. You know, sometime back, like again 10-15 years back, we were saying like, no, if you don't know computers, we will lose jobs, mm -hmm. right? And now, is there anyone who doesn't operate a computer? or who doesn't use the basics, the email, the office tools and stuff, no. That's what is going to happen with the AI. It's not going to take away our jobs, so probably we'll be doing much better things in our life, right? Instead of making millions, probably you will end up making billions, huh. uh, right? And then elevating people from, uh, you know, poverty line and all that stuff. So I don't think it's going to uh, eat our jobs. It's going to help everyone to grow together. AI is new. We are all learning at the same time. One of the things that I did today is I went to an investment bank, presented an opportunity for them and told them, guys, AI is going to disrupt your business. And I'd like to give you a solution on how you can integrate AI into your business. And just like that, a job was presented. What does that mean? Again, I'll say it, AI is not going to take your job. The person who knows how to use AI is going to take your job. Yep. Right. Yep. When we speak of security, it always comes from the negativity perspective, yep. data security. But there has to be a place where this giving of your data and where this world of security is positive for us and not from, oh, they're going to take my data and do all these negative things. What does the positive side of data and data security, what does that look like? So I know right now we are scared of our data being stolen and everything. Bad actors are using data for bad things because, yes, if any of you, if any of you share with me your email address, I possibly can tell all the Airbnbs you've been to the last two years. I dare you, share with me. No, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's, it's because platforms like Facebook and the likes are stealing your data already. They are all utilizing your data to be able to actually make intelligent decisions for you to be able to have informed decision making with the things that you do every day. So the data is already out there. It's already been utilized. We need to actually have policies and regulations that can actually make sure that data that we are actually giving out is being utilized for our own benefits. However, there are so many good things with AI and data sharing that mm. if the right regulation and policies are being put in place, we will be at a better place to be able to actually get this done properly. If you go to South Korea, I schooled in South Korea for four years. In my fourth year, 2016 in South Korea, South Korean toilet, intelligent toilet, when you poop, sorry for that, for that, can actually tell the kind of cancer you're about to have in four years. Whoa. Yes, that's 2016. So information can be used um, to actually generate good things, but right now we are scared because the policies and the governance we have around these this laws and, and, and things are not properly being propagated into the, into the right people yes. and also education. Majority of people don't understand data protection. So we need to actually go back to the basics, understand how data is being collected, how it's being used, and people who actually misuse that data are penalized for the way they actually use data. What does a mindset look like in this AI-driven education world that you're operating? I just saw a survey out of the US and they said, and employers were saying that actually they wouldn't hire, 75% they'd prefer to hire somebody with AI skills and less experience than somebody with more experience without AI skills. What is exciting is the fact that global jobs are actually coming 
coming here, and that's actually something we're actually looking to place a number of our students into those global jobs as well. Bright, what does the money look like? I have three laptops. All three laptops serve three different people. I call software company in UK, it's a different laptop. My company running in Kenya, it's a different laptop. My job that I negotiated, salary for Netherlands, it's a different laptop as well. So the thing is, there's opportunities for people to be able to actually make money um, with other jobs out there by actually having the skills they have right now. And with AI, you're able to automate most of the things that I do. There's a guy I know, he's... What do the numbers look like? He's 25 years old, he makes 1.2 million Kenya shillings. Jesus Christ. On a bad day. Are Kenyans waking up and therefore are different SME and entrepreneurs then getting on, uh, onboarding onto Zoho or is the mindset only for the top tier companies? So it's meant for uh, SMEs and in Kenya, uh, when you know we started the local operations, we realized it's uh, this is a country where we have more than 60% of the GDP happens through the SMEs. Mm. So it's, it's been very good and uh, the offtake is okay, uh, but the way you are saying it, the mindset is still not there. So uh, as much as we are trying, there is a lot of potential, yes, a lot of scope for uh, uh, you know Kenyan companies to grow. Uh, I think uh, the space is still available.